All right, here we are, episode 46 of Merriweather's World. Hey, Wade, good to see you. You beat out Kevin tonight for first one in the pool. Cool. Hey, that rhymed. All right, so my name is Dr. Mark Merriweather Vorderbruggen, creator of the Foraging Texas website, author of Idiot's Guide Foraging, uh, partial creator of the Wazoo Survival Foraging Bandana, and lots of other stuff. So yeah, we are here tonight, episode 46. Like I said, we are going to talk about the uh, plants proven scientifically to help you either strengthen your immune system or to particularly help uh, stop a viral infection. Obviously, this has something to do with the coronavirus that's currently scaring lots of people around the world. Uh, but before we do that, of course, we have to have a word from our sponsors. Hey, Kiri. Hey, Kathleen. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Wade beat you. All right. So first, sponsors and so forth. If you want to help keep me happy, <laughs> let's face it, that's what it's all about, right? Uh, there are a number of things here you can go and do. You can buy the book, Idiot's Guide Foraging. You can buy the bandana, Wazoo Survival Bandana. Uh, you can buy stuff from Uncommon... Let's see, there we go. Uncommon Bees. Bzzz. And just a, a heads up. Uh, whoops. During the show, uh, Uncommon Bees, if you use the coupon code FORKINGWEEDS, you will get 20% off instead of the normal 10%. And then this deal will go until midnight tonight. So you might, uh, after hearing some of the plants, you might want to go check out Uncommon Bees. Link, you know, posted there. And uh, you might see some of those plants infused in honey. Kind of a win-win there. Or, also, we have the herbs. Also the link in there. Uh, up in uh, East Texas there. A good friend of mine runs this shop. A uh, number of different things. He offer or he does sell stuff online, or you can go into the shop. And same thing, well, kind of the same thing. If you use the Forking Weeds coupon code with him, with herbs, link given there, uh, up until midnight tonight, he will give you a 15% discount. So helping you all stay healthy. So always a good thing. Um, what else? Hey, Kenneth. Good to see you. Hey, Amanda. Uh, oh, cool, Kathleen. She just received her Uncommon Bees CBD body scrub. So I, I, I want to point out, so like the, the uh, Uncommon Bees, not only do they have different infused honey, but, you know, bees also produce wax and they have all sorts of really cool uh, wax-based salves and ointments and scrubs and lipsticks and uh, after tattoo soothing creams and things like that. So really, really good. And you get an extra discount because you're you like hanging out with me on Thursday nights. Hey, Matthew. Good to see you, man. Haven't seen you in a while. Um, weren't you like overseas or doing something cool like that for a bit? Oh, well. Uh, what else do we got going? Oh, so also if you go to the Foraging Texas website, www.foragingtexas.com, lots of classes coming up. Basically, uh, starting, well, I got some private classes, but from February 15th now into June, I don't have the June classes up yet, uh, pretty much every weekend is booked with classes. So if you are hoping to get me, like, you know, some event coming up two weeks from now, you're out of luck. I am booked up against the wall, um, which is why I really like the herbs Mark's Battle Mage blend. This is specifically designed by Ricardo over that herbs to help me keep up with my absolutely insane lifestyle. And of course, you know, followed by the, oops, the Uncommon Bees Buzz Honey uh, Energy Infused. It's basically an energy drink in honey form. Uh, these guys keep me going so I can keep you informed in the world of plants. Whew. 
Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, so you were back in the UK. Cool, cool. Um, what else do I have from a homekeeping, a housekeeping thing? Yeah, mainly if you, if you want to see upcoming classes, and like I said, there's a bunch of them, just check out the list of upcoming classes on Foraging Texas. Uh, also, if you haven't, if you're watching this and I've never actually said hi or anything like that, go ahead and say hi tonight because I really want to get an idea how many people are just hanging out, lurking and so forth. Like I can see the numbers and it will say like you had 1700 viewers in the last hour. And that's cool. But there's, you know, the, 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 the wonderful dozen, probably like two dozen that are actually interacting with me and as great as they are and great questions. I always want to hear from everyone else too. Okay. So, uh, yeah, busy man. Um, other things going on. Not a whole lot. Uh, just, just all the normal, you know, that the whole medicine man plant company and, uh, working on the online classes. Oh, I just realized I have to write, uh, this or the next month's article for charm East Texas magazine, uh, like tomorrow. If you're not familiar, I write a monthly article for Charm East Texas. I don't, I should probably include that. I, I include the link over on Foraging Texas, but oh well. Okay. Hey, Jennifer. Hi from Austin. Joanne. Uh, hi. Or anything like that. Mark. Oh, cool. Hey, Serenity. Uh, Amanda, do you do any classes for kids? I don't do specific classes for kids. Um, I do private classes for scout troops, you know, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, homeschool groups. Um, I'm completely booked up on that right now. Uh, that being said, I really, really encourage parents to bring their kids along to the classes. The only thing I ask is because most of these classes are like four hours long, uh, that if your kid starts to get bored or disruptive or somehow impacts the ability of other people to learn, just take them to the back and kind of chill with them a bit because in the end uh you know we don't want them disrupting other people's abilities to learn but otherwise kids are always welcome at my my classes i i, I try really hard to, to be kid friendly and parent approved doesn't always work but you know so occasionally hey ellis all right hey rebecca Alessandra Bussy, hi, waving back at you. Hey, Chad. Oh, yeah, Chad, you're a regular. Uh, Jody, hey, 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 Janice, long time no see. Uh, Lamona, cool. Oh, you saw the magazine Charm with one of your articles. Cool, cool. The Charm East Texas, uh, you can find the print form all over East Texas. It's it's uh, published out of Lufkin. Um, so all around there. It, it's, oh, I don't have any copies sitting here even. It's it's like one of those fancy, smancy lifestyle, lots of beautiful people wearing beautiful clothes and shopping at beautiful stores. And then they have me. And I've been writing for them for over two years now. Uh, I don't understand it either, but they seem to like it. Hey, Diana, and hey, other Diana. That's cool. We have Diana and Diana. Uh... Ooh, okay, so, oh, segue time. Deanna Carpenter asks, I would like to plant elderberry in my garden in Weatherford. Any types you recommend? I know about the pears factor. Okay, so really the uh, Sambuca Niger, you know, the black elderberry or the Sambuca Canada, you know, the, basically the Canada or the black uh, elderberries are most likely the only two you are going to find in nurseries for sale. Um, it's very rare to find any other type. Luckily, both of those do well uh, as long as you can keep them watered enough. Uh, they do like also kind of rich, slightly acidic uh, soil and full sun. As I said, I have mine in my yard there where the AC drips. So all summer long, you know, sucking the, excuse me, the humidity out of the air and, you know, dropping it on my elderberry, which seems to make them thrive to the point where several times a year I have to whack them back because they're starting to take over. All right. So I said the word segue. So let's segue. So you are probably here tonight because you've been seeing the news about coronavirus. Uh, I, w I was reaching for my drink, but it's not a corona. Uh, just a, a side note. Tonight's drink is tonic water, um, a little bit of artificial smoke flavor, and my own special mixture of Mark's 
mixture or Meriwether's Immortality Elixir. And we'll, we'll talk about this at some point. But it's basically everything that protects me against everything except bullets and you know, other sharp pointy objects. Um, but any sort of microbiological, viral, cancerol, you know, any, anything living. So I guess it doesn't protect me against zombies, but they're not living. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll talk about it at, towards the end there. So, but like I said, you've been, you've seen the news. You're kind of maybe freaking out about the whole coronavirus thing. Um, my personal take on it is it's always good to be aware and prepared for the end of the world. Just, you know, meteors, asteroids, aliens, you know, politicians. There's always something threatening the planet. So it's always good to have a certain number of, you know, weeks, months, preps just hanging out just in case. But from what I've seen of the coronavirus, reading some scientific papers, looking at a lot of the online stuff from, you know, everything from quack news sites to real news sites, um, a lot of fear, a lot of unfounded fear, in my opinion. Uh, you know, they, they tote the death rates and all this stuff. But uh, if you look at it, the number of deaths from just the regular flu in California since the beginning of the year is about triple the number of deaths worldwide from this particular uh, flu. And the regular flu is also very easily transmitted from person to person, if not easier. So um, my take, knocking on wood, because I'm a scientist and it's scientifically you know, proven that knocking on wood improves your health or your, your luck. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm considering this another long line of end of the world happenings that the world doesn't get ended by. Uh, there was, I don't know if you remember the, the TV show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. One of her friends once commented, like, hanging around with you, you end up needing to know the plural form of apocalypse. And if you watch the news nowadays, you pretty much need to know the plural version of apocalypse. Because every week there's a new apocalypse happening. That being said, there's illnesses out there. There's the regular flu, you know, there's things like that, that it's always good to be prepared. And getting sick sucks. Getting sick interferes with your life. Uh, family members getting sick is a problem. If you are weak or infirm or otherwise susceptible to diseases, that can be a problem. So mankind has been dealing with you know, sickness and illness for a long, 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 long time. And so we've figured out a number of plants that seem to help with this. And because scientists like to disprove things, a number of them said, well, that can't work. It's not science. Let's, you know, it's plants. Why can plants help us? And so they did some studies and the end result is going, damn, there's something here. You know, it, it only took us, you know, 20,000 years to go full circle. All right. Hey, hey, David. Hey, Anna. Hey, Melody. Hey, Sharon. Cool. All right. Hey, Melody. Yeah, Buffy. So the last, no, that's not, that's not true. I was going to say the last show that I watched every episode of was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It was an awesome show. Um, I admit now that I'm 51, it, isn't quite as, you know, speaks to me the way it did when I was, you know, still in college when it came out. Uh, that being said, you know, if characters in that show had held, had cell phones, the whole show would have changed. But anyway, I digress, because you're here to learn about plants and that will help with uh, protecting the immune, or helping either help your immune system, strengthen your immune, immune system, or interfere with the viruses either getting into your cells or preventing their replication once they get into cells. So, hey, Joe. Okay, so let's talk with that. And we have to start, like I said, segue with uh, elderberry. So let me just uh, put this up here. So what I just posted was... Uh, Elderberry, the link to my website, Foraging Texas, and hopes to drive traffic there. And also several uh, scientific journal articles talking about the mechanisms and chemistry of 
how elderberry works to strengthen your immune system and also interfere with cell or sorry viral attacks of your cells by far my absolute favorite favorite plant for medicinal you know infection type things will be the elderberry it's such a broad spectrum of action it's been shown that it does help with uh, strengthening the immune system uh, let's, let's actually take a second here to talk about your immune system so what the immune system does is it has these cells that are patrolling the body and looking around and when it finds a cell in your body that doesn't have the special we'll do a v for vorderbruggen special markers on the surface because all your all your cells in your body have special proteins on the surface that indicate it is you and so these cells go around oh yep, that's good go 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 and away they go and ignore it but then occasionally you will get some alien cell that doesn't belong in there and these cells will come along and go, hmm, I don't see the little V sign. This is an alien. Glob onto it. Now, it's globbed onto there, and it's just kind of grabbing the cell. And what it does is it sends out a signal to the immune system to release killer T cells. And those are the cells that come in. Look, I need a third hand here. So they look for this conglomerate, you know, the, the alien cell with this other cell on it and then they attack it and swallow it and destroy it basic in a nutshell model simplified thing going on but it's a multi-step process um, but one thing is along with this the the um the body remembers the the shape of the alien surface proteins and so it then has killer t cells that ah you know, the biting ones that start searching that out. So if it shows up in the body, it doesn't need this first step. It, it suddenly swarms with all these designed to kill it. Like I said, simplified model, but that's basically what's going on. The elderberry, it's been shown that it speeds up the process and, and increases the number of the killer T cells, that ah, ones coming down to bite on it. So by speeding up the release and increasing the number, you have a bigger wave of your defenders attacking the, the virus particles. Uh, so it, it, it can more quickly overrun the individual viral particles. Does that make sense? You, you have more good soldiers attacking the bad soldiers. So that's always a good thing. So elderberry has been shown to, like I said, increase the speed at which the good soldiers are released and also the number of good soldiers. So yay, elderberry. But wait, there's more. I love that saying. I'll, I'll never get rid of the chamois guy from my head. Anyway, the other process that it does, and this is a whole other mechanism, but there are chemicals in the elderberry that have shown to interfere with the viral mechanisms that a lot of different viruses use to grab onto and enter the cells. Because remember, viruses, they, they're almost like zombie undead particles they have dna in them some of them have rna but you know, they have dna but they don't have the machinery they need to reproduce themselves what they do is they come to a cell inject into it their dna this dna hijacks the machinery in the cell starts making a whole bunch of these virus particles and assembling them and then they eventually rupture through the cell and go spread to other parts of the body other nearby cells things like that um so if you can do something to either keep the virus from getting in, can't get in, or once it gets in, prevents its DNA from taking over the cellular machine, uh, that re greatly reduces the, the viral infection, uh, possibly even stopping it. Um, because there's so many of them, viruses floating around and so forth, it's, it's, uh, a lot of times it will just slow down the process of getting sick, but hopefully long enough for your body to go, hey, enemy, and, you know, release all the other soldiers. But elderberry, like I said, it releases the soldiers, but it also interferes with the virus getting into your cells. So it's two for the price of one. Uh, really, no other plant is as good at just overall defense as the elderberry is. Um, 
lots, you, you know, you can go into Walmart, you can go to Walgreens, you can go wherever they have lots and lots of elderberry extracts. I don't have a feeling for which one is better than another, but really this is something just, you know, as soon as the cold and flu season comes in, you should have on hand. And it's really something I take every day. So that's one of the components of my elixir of immortality. Uh, in fact, we're to do. So I have the elderflower and brandy tincture. Um, the reason I use elderflower rather than berries, uh, both are pretty much equal potency. It's just the birds always eat all my berries. So all I can ever get from mine are the other are the flowers. But really, uh, if nothing else, be taking elderberry daily. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. Uncommon bees. They do have an elderberry-infused honey. Good stuff. Goes great in tea. All right. Hey, Kyle. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt the... Oh, no. Hey. Monty Python possesses all of us. It was so sad. Uh, the latest Monty Python death. Hey, Portia. Uh, Shawana. Would elderberry negatively affect someone with an autoimmune disorder? Excellent question. Uh, so, uh, Sean, 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 I'm sorry, I'm going to screw up your name. Um, ask, okay, what about elderberry with people where their immune system is already attacking them for some reason, say lupus or some of the other autoimmune diseases? Yes, in that case, you probably need to avoid elderberry. Um like I said, with lupus and some of these other autoimmunes, the body has lost its ability to recognize your own cells. And so anything you do to speed up and strengthen the immune system can actually backfire on you and cause increased damage to your own body. So yes, excellent. Thank you for asking that. I would have uh, totally blipped over that part. So yeah, if you are suffering from some sort of autoimmune illness, elderberry is not for you. Do not take elderberry. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, uh, Deanna, can elderberry be not necessarily needed be harmful? Think about it. Things are always trying to attack you. You are constantly surrounded by viruses uh, or, you know, bacteria. You know, your immune system is constantly under attack. So normally when you're in good shape and healthy and strong and, you know, everything's good, then your body can resist a lot of things. It's when you get stressed out, when you get tired, when you get weak, when you get worn out, or, you know, it's something so new that your body has no idea, never seen it before. That's when you get in. There's no reason that I've ever found, other than people with autoimmune disorders, but there's nothing in elderberry that can cause problems if you're taking it daily. I, I've been taking it daily for you know, a decade or more. Um, so, you know, you don't be guzzling, you know, lots of it, but, you know, just follow the recommended dose on the package and there should be no no issue whatsoever. And it's really one of those things that's just, in my case, it, it seems like a, a great thing to take on a daily basis because you never know when you're going to encounter something your immune system is not ready for. Uh, okay, Jordan Franklin. I read about how it's the uh, anthrocyanins or colors in elderberries that have the antiviral effect. By that thought, would our wild grapes or agarita berries also contain the same compounds and be against, uh, effective against the flu? Great question. Uh, short answer with a lot of hand waving. Yes. The uh, like the agarita, the agarita flowers, the wild grapes, uh, the agarita root. A lot of those have uh, antiviral and anti, you know, attack effects. Um, the compounds are not exactly the same though. So they're similar, but they're not exactly the same. And from the research I've read on a lot of those others, the best one is still by far the elderberry. So they will work, but they won't work as well in most people. You know, there's always genetic diversity uh, going around. Um, but really the, the best thing are the elderberry for, for the, the, the best guarantee is from the elderberry. Definitely eat grapes and you know tomatoes and a lot of the brightly colored fruits because the flavonoids and the 
all the other the, uh, the, the phenolic acids and all that all have really great uh, strengthening effects for you. But there's really something special about the elderberry and the particular compounds in the elderberry. Um, kind of for those of you who read Harry Potter, uh, you know the, the the one of the three artifacts, the, the 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 deadly wand, the most deadly wand was made out of elder. There is a lot of mythology around elder trees that it is like you know basically favored by death. Um, I don't know why, because it's so healthy. Maybe it's favored by death because it makes his job easier because not as many people are dying if they're all taking elderberry. So you can kind of kick back and relax some, my theory. But yeah, lots of lots of mythology saying, you know, the, the elder, like, uh, what is it? The Irish, a lot of Irish people will refuse to cut an elderberry bush uh, just because they're afraid it will invoke, you know, bad stuff upon them. But really, it is good. Uh, Deanna Carpenter, where are you located? I'm on the north side of Houston. So, yeah, I am on the north side of Houston, and I grow elderberry here. I've been growing it for years. Um, what's interesting is in a mild winter, like what we've been having, I have quite a few that still have green leaves on them. I haven't had any flower in a week or two, but even through the winter, I've been successfully uh, other, even more milder uh, winters. I've had flowers all through the winter. Okay, Melody Scott Smith, is the elderflower raw? Like the white flower, what does it taste like? Yes, the elderflower is edible raw. Um, how does it taste? It tastes fresh. It tastes like elder. The closest I could describe of it is kind of a cheap champagne sort of flavor. Uh, remember, though, the elderberry berries you cannot eat raw. In the elderberry berries, or the elderberries, there is a particular oil that will cause uh, stomach upset. If you dry the berries or cook the berries, that removes that oil and then they're good to go. So you can take fresh berries off the tree, mix them in your pancake batter, cook up the pancakes, and you're good to go. But if you take the berries fresh off the plant and start eating them, you're going to get an upset stomach. But the elderflowers, I, I pick them off and just eat them raw just because they're good and they're plentiful. And, you know, if I don't, they're going to go to waste unless I can, you know, have time to throw them in a jar and mix alcohol with them. Uh, I have Hashimoto's thyroid, no elderberry. I'm sorry, I do not know anything about Hashimoto's thyroid. Um, never heard of it before, sorry. Uh, uh, Shana, uh, perhaps a regiment of adaptive, uh, adaptogens versus elder. Okay, so adaptogens, they are mainly to help you deal with stressful situations and help you uh, either get rid of the particular chemicals that your body produces under stress. So either flushes the stress out or prevents the particular cortisol and some of those other things from forming. Not really all that effective at preventing an infection. I would still go with elderberry uh, instead of adaptogens. Um... Okay, yeah, Matthew, good point there. For lupus, there are some immune modulating supplements that you can specifically use. Uh, some medicinal mushroom extracts like chaga, which is immune modulating rather than stimulating. Yeah, so it, it basically keeps an eye on the immune system, doesn't let it get out of control. Like if, if it's, it's almost like a thermostat or a governor on an engine. If the, therm, if the immune system starts, you know, spooling up too high, it, it, it brings it back down, and if it gets too low, it brings it back up. Um, Christy, do you think we are in for a late winter? I have no idea. Um, Texas seasons, you know, it's a day-to-day, hour-to-hour thing. I don't know. <laughs> uh, psoriasis and elderberry. So psoriasis, where you have the bacterial infection on the skin, Elderberry, consumed elderberry, is not going to do much for that um, because the particular compounds that the elderberry is giving you uh, aren't really coming to the surface. And the, the surface is not really designed 
for the immune system. It's designed to keep things out of the inside of the body. So the immune system, you know, well, the immune system works inside the body. It doesn't seep, you know, killer T cells out on the surface to look for things. Uh, that's why skin infections are a bit more difficult. So my swag, scientific, wild-ass guess is elderberry is not going to help with psoriasis. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, Matthew is also bringing up the star anise, which is has one of the components for the Tamiflu. Keep in mind the, yeah, so the star anise, it has some antiviral effects, but those effects are completely unrelated to the effects of Tamiflu. The, the molecule, the Tamiflu molecule, it's like a 13-step process from the star anise molecule, starter, the shishimic acid, um, and has a very, very, very different mechanism of action than the star anise. So... Okay, uh, also, Matthew, do you know if there are different compounds in the flowers versus the berries? Yeah, there are. Um, in the elderberry, there, there's, there's, so you have the flowers, you have the berries. There's some subtle differences, but there's also some overlap. Um, and from the research I've seen, the, if, the main thing is if you are stuck using flowers, like I usually am, uh, whoops, turning it that way, take more. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the berries are stronger, but like I said, in my case, the flowers are what I got. If you can get the berry extract, go with the berry extract. If you can't, you know, go with the flower, just take a little bit more. Uh, Lindsay, uh, psoriasis is an autoimmune disorder. Uh, my understanding, talking to people with... Okay, wait, 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 okay. Rewinding. I was thinking... Uh, 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 not echinacea, the S S S E eczema. Yeah, eczema, psoriasis. Um, good, good question. I'm not sure. I haven't looked into psoriasis. Thank you, Lindsay, for for yeah, reminding me. I, yeah, I was I was thinking the eczema. Um, not sure about psoriasis. Uh, Kathy Stanley, do you know any plants that will be high in vitamin C? I have to avoid any C derived from corn or berries. Okay, so high vitamin C, onions. Onions are loaded with vitamin C. Garlic, garlic is loaded with vitamin C. Pine needles, pine needles are loaded with vitamin C. Uh, if you go, oh, here, tell you what. Oh, do I still have it? Yeah, let me just, I am jumping all over here, but. So be it. Where where is pine? Hold on a second. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Let's do that. Okay, if you go to the Foraging Texas website, I don't want to waste any more time. There's 200 and some plants there. You have just have to scroll down the right hand side, sorry, left hand side, and you will find pine. And it's in alphabetical order, but up oh, there it is. Okay. So it will tell you how to make pine needle tea. It is high in C. Okay. If you have access to pine needles, you have a lifetime supply of vitamin C. Okay. Um, Serenity, how do you feel about elderberry prepared your way versus exochip and making it into a liqueur? Does it decrease the effect, uh, efficacy? So my way of making it is taking the flowers and putting them in a jar and adding vodka or brandy. Depend and usually with elderberry, I go with brandy because I like the flavor mixture. As opposed to the berries where they will dehydrate them or dry them somehow, and then crush them into a powder and then soak them in alcohol and then strain them out. Long story short, the solvent is pretty much the same. The chemicals that you're extracting with that solvent is pretty much the same. Uh, there's no real major difference in the efficacy between their way and the commercial way and my way and stuff like that. When it comes right down to it, I think the biggest difference will be the quality of the plant taken. I mean, if you read the news, there was, it was a year, two years ago, there was a, 
a huge wave of fake herb type stuff being sold. You know, things were labeled something, but it was mainly just sawdust. So you need to buy from a reputable quality dealer um, or grow it yourself if you want to ensure what you really have is what you really have. Quality supplier or grow it yourself. Okay, and Matthew, you, you prefer the, the double extraction where you do water and alcohol. If I can ask, uh, Matthew, do you use the like 100 proof or 190 proof alcohol for your double extractions? I'm curious because uh, I would assume that you would be using the 190 proof just from a 100 proof is still 50% water, which is really going to take out any of the, the things that are soluble in water. Um, I'm assuming with the double extraction, then uh, since you're using alcohol, you want something that's mainly ethanol that has slightly different solvation properties than water. So, hey, Chris, good to see you, man. How are the kids doing? They're looking good in the, the, the Facebook there. Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> so we spent a lot more time on elderberry than I planned. Um, let's see. Are there any other questions on elderberry? Otherwise, I want to jump to my second favorite healing plant in general, and that is Heals All, also known as Self Heal, but uh, the Prunella vulgaris. This is a... Whoop, okay, I had to make sure there for a second I, I posted the right link. Yeah, so really... Elderberry is here for fighting illnesses and infections and things like that. Heals all is like right here in a lot of cases and sometimes right here in a lot of cases. So since we're specifically talking about flu style viruses, I put elderberry first because that has the um, most proven scientific research on blocking flu viruses, viri... Uh, type stuff, whereas heals all is just an all around. I mean, everything. Uh, if you look at the, the the scientific literature, kidney disease, you know, stomach illness, any sort of antimicrobial, uh, antimicrobial, antiviral, antifungal, um, brain disorders, endocrine disorders, cancers, everything. Um, and because it's used and has been shown to be so effective on so many things. It's kind of a jack of all trades and they haven't had a lot of deep research specifically into the flu virus other than, yeah, it helps there too. So that's why I put it you know, one step below the elderberry. Oh, Matthew, it's hard one. Oh, you need to move to a better state. Uh, do, 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 just, uh... Okay, serenity. Uh, okay, I'm just looking at your elderberry liquid thing. Okay, yeah, and Matthew, the elderberry wine, really good stuff there too. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I believe with elderberry wines, some of the medicinal compounds are carried over, uh, but not as much. The fermentation process is doing all sorts of wacky chemistry. And so, yeah, the, the best thing is some sort of elderberry tincture or syrup sort of thing first. But uh, yeah, let's now jump to Heels All. It is here in the Houston area. It's just starting to show up. I grow it in my herb garden, in my herb spiral. Uh, you can find it in a lot of wild places. A number of good nurseries will sell it. You can find the seeds online. You can go to Amazon and you can find Heals All, also known as Self Heal, uh, extracts and tinctures too. And this is another thing that uh, is really worth taking on a daily basis because it is just this amazing cure-all. It's, excuse me, it's one of those plants that almost sounds too fantastic to be real as far as all the different things that it helps with in the human body. Um, it, it really is an angel of plants. Uh, Raphael, the archangel Raphael is the patron saint of healers and uh, us Catholics feel he's the one that when healing uh, occurred to like, was it St. Tobias and so forth? It was the archangel Gabriel, you know, being the funnel from God to 
uh, bring the healing force to the people that needed it. Um, so yeah, the, the heals all, it's like this, you know, power of healing that's miraculous. So, uh, Brunel, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So Dennis herb spiral. Yeah. Remind me to, to put up a link to my herb spiral. So just to go sideways here. Um, yeah, I hope you weren't ever, you know, to those of you new to the show, remember this is kind of incoherent babbling for an hour, uh, based on the questions and so forth that come up. But an herb spiral is a permaculture technique of growing a lot of herbs in a very small area by making a spiral mound. And then depending on the side and height, you know, so, you know, the south side of the mound gets more sun, the north side gets less sun. Uh, the top drains more quickly, so the top layers are for drier plants. The lower ones, the water, you know, soaks down and stays in the lower area. So the, the wet-loving herbs, you plant low, sunny on the south, shady on the north. And you can pack a whole bunch of herbs into a fairly small area with an herb spiral. If you go over to Foraging, Texas, um, you know, let me just jump ahead here because I actually have over there a whole post devoted to herbal teas. Yeah, here we go. Tips on making wild teas. So let me just post this link. Okay, so yeah, there there is my herb spiral. I just posted a link to that. Just a minute here. But yeah, it's a, if you have a limited backyard uh, in like a, a five by five area, you can grow a, you know, a dozen or more herbs really well, each with their uh, particular preferred, you know, soil, moisture, sunlight requirements. Uh, so Hugo culture, not exactly, uh, Hugo culture where you, you plant or you, you bury a bunch of logs in dirt and then put dirt over on top of them and then grow things on them. It's kind of the same Matthew and that it's a mound, but it is in a definite spiral. I'll, I'll have to take a picture of it and post it here tomorrow or, or Saturday or something like that. Um, but a great way of growing a very complex herb garden and collection of herbs in a very small area. Highly recommend them. So yeah, I have self-heal growing in there. Uh, so self-heal, it is a mint. So if you know about mints, mints can be very invasive. If you have the proper uh, growing environment for them, they will spread very, very uh, quickly. Um, the self-heal I have, I was gifted one plant uh, about 10 years ago. A lot of stuff happened 10 years ago in my life. And it's just wild through my yard now. Uh, keeping in mind my yard is 30 feet by 70 feet, you know, standard suburban backyard. But it's been turned into a, a permaculture food forest. And, you know, the mints, the seeds and all that have just been scattered all over. Uh, a lot of times I'll find a new one and I'll dig it up and put it somewhere where I want it more. But <laughs> yeah, so check out the local nurseries, call around, you can find seeds. Um, we're right on it. I would not say it's too late to plant uh, the uh, Heals All self-heal seeds now, but if you waited a month, it probably would be. Uh, so you want to try and get it in the ground now. Uh, seedlings, if you can find the seedlings or young plants at nurseries around here, uh, you have better luck with there. It does great on a windowsill too, but the, the windowsill itself probably, unless you have multiple pots of it, uh, you probably won't get enough to do a lot with. I'm trying to think. So I don't have the self heal here, but let's just say this, you know, this is a standard, what is this, a pint jar? Whoops. And, you know, I'm reusing the uncommon bees. But uh, so you let the, 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 the self-heal, the, the, the heels all dry. Um, that helps break down the cell walls. Put about two fingers worth of the crushed, dried self-heal in there. And then three fingers worth of the 
80 to 100 proof uh, alcohol and then let it soak six to eight weeks, strain it out, and then add it to your elderberry tincture and all those other things too. Um, yeah, so, wow, we're, we're, we're shooting through the time here. I am not going to get to a lot of the stuff I wanted to. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to post all the other information so you can see what I planned on talking about. And you can go and look at all the scientific papers and, and you know, read for yourself what these plants have been shown to do as far as you know, helping the immune system or interfering with the viral reproductive strategy. Um, Lindsay Wilson, does dandelion have any medical medicinal uses? Oh boy, does dandelion have a lot of medicinal uses. In fact, tell you what, I am going to respond with this. Now, the article I am responding to you with is specifically on its antiviral uh, type stuff. But yeah, the if you go to the foraging Texas dandelion, there's a bunch of different medicinal uses. Um, so the flower, it increases the healing rate of wounds, like a, a cut or a broken skin injury. The roots and leaves are diuretic. They make you pee. They're antibacterial. They're somewhat of a laxative. They're a sedative. They're an appetite stimulant. And I don't have on here the viral stuff because I found that more recently. Um, there's a lot of stuff I need to update on the Foraging Texas website. Uh, those of you who don't know, I was recently contracted with Texas A&M to write a whole bunch of foraging books covering the you know, edible and medicinal plants of Texas. The first one uh, to be released uh, in about two years, two and a half years, it's a medicinal plants of Texas. Uh, so easy to find, easy to use plants that you can use to make medicine and how to use those plants to make medicine. And dandelion, of course, is one of the big ones. Um, okay, let me go back to the... All right. Uh, I don't have... Let's see. Hmm. All right. I'm just, you know, bear with me while I, I... Everclear, a good choice. Okay, Amanda, Everclear, a good choice for making a tincture. Let's talk about that quick. Um, actually, there is one case... Okay, so cleavers. If you look at that big, long list of plants I listed, uh, cleavers, the sticky weed, the Velcro weed, um, has some antiviral properties, but the particular compounds in the cleavers are not very water-soluble, but they are soluble in ethanol. And so specifically in the case of cleavers, it is recommended to use 190 proof alcohol for the tincture. But the basic rule of thumb is if you have a dried plant, a plant that you let, you know, ooh, I'm going to make a mess here. But if you have a plant that you've been letting hang for a while to dry, um, you mix that with 80 to 100 proof alcohol. If it is a fresh green plant, then you mix it with the Everclear. The reason being, remember, plants are still like 80% water. And if you put the green plants in Everclear, it will, through what's called osmo uh, osmotic pressure, cause the cells to rupture and dump all their compounds into the Everclear along with all the water in the plants. And so that water dilutes the solution down to about 100 proof, approximately, you know, if you're doing the right rule of thumb sort of thing. Uh, you need at least 40% or 80 proof alcohol to maintain the shelf life of herbal tinctures. If you drop below that, uh, there are some bacteria and some things that can start to start to decompose and cause problems with your stuff. So you never really want to have a tincture that is less than 80 proof, aka 40% alcohol. You always want to have it higher than that. Um, but if you go too high, then you start losing the water-soluble compounds. So it's a little complicated, but once you're doing it for a while, you figure it out. Um, bum, bum, bum. All right. 
Ooh, Ken, uh, Kendula. That would be another really good. Kendula is great for skin issues. I actually, on Forging Texas, I have Kendula. So, to do, I have, don't I have Kendula? Oh, I don't. Nah, I must. Well, maybe I don't. But yeah, uh, I grow Kendula in my medicinal garden uh, mainly for skin issues, uh, especially to help heal damaged skin. But that's kind of not viral. Um, let's see here. Okay, oh. Uh, I'm going to scoop your name here. Uh, Keslop, uh, I picked it up at Arborgate and Tomball. Great nursery. I love Arborgate. So they, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen Heals All self-heal at Arborgate. That's really good. Yeah, <laughs> Matthew, the dandelion. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I'll definitely be keeping people posted on the books. Um, uh, Kevin, tincture the whole dandelion plant together. Yeah, roots and flowers and leaves all together in the dandelion is the probably the best way of making the dandelion tincture. The The tincture isn't really good. The, the flower by itself in an infused oil is good for skin healing. The tincture, not so much, but the tincture is good for a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, yeah, Terrence, uh, check out the, the Arbor Gate. Okay, Amanda, so is Everclear the right choice for chaga tincture? Um, not positive. I use it for the Rishi. I would say with the chaga, the Everclear or 100 proof are both going to be okay. Um, if I were doing Everclear with chaga, I would do the double extraction method where you soak the crushed up chaga in Everclear for six to eight weeks, excuse me, strain it out, take that chaga that was in the Everclear, put it in water, however much Everclear you have, put it in that much water, boil it for a while to extract any water soluble, non ethanol soluble uh, compounds and then combine them together. So you take the water where you boiled the chaga and mix it with the Everclear that you used to initially uh, extract the chaga. If you look at turkey tail mushroom on Foraging Texas, I talk about double extraction there and also reishi. So with a lot of mushrooms, especially the medicinal mushrooms, I really recommend the uh, double extraction method just to make sure you get everything. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, you are doing a double extraction. In that case, you're, you're doing pretty good. Okay. Uh, 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 Gina Vargas, what about toothache plant? Do you grow that? Okay, so there is a toothache plant. If you're talking about the small plant, I used to, but I don't anymore. If you're talking about the toothache tree, the big spiny Hercules club, uh, also known as tickle tongue, that has the numbing agent, yes, I do grow one of those in my backyard. Um, but I, I haven't done much with the toothache plant. It's not commonly found in the wild around here, the, the little bush type thing. So I haven't done much with that. Uh, agarita berries or leaves. Uh, so the agarita leaf, man, we're just completely off topic, but I'm having fun. So let's go with it. See, that's the nice thing. If you hang out and ask questions, you'll get your questions answered, or I'll try to. And I, I should point out that afterwards, when the show is done in eight minutes, I go through and re-answer the people's questions, you know, if I missed it or just re-put the, the answer there on the, the Facebook page so you can see it there. But Terrence, to get back to your question, the leaves in particular of agarita are really good for nausea. So they're anti-nausea, whether it be seasickness, car sickness, or... Uh, Hangover, uh, things like that, uh, the, the tea, or even just sucking on the agarita leaves. Now, keep in mind, the agarita leaves are sharp and pointy, so you kind of want to crush them up some to get the points off them. Uh, but the agarita leaves are really good for the nausea. The root, is, the very yellow root, is loaded with a, a compound called berberine, which is a very strong antimicrobial compound. Uh, aronia berries, not so much. I have not studied much in aronia berries. Oh, Tina, you're in for a world. Hey, if you haven't checked, remember, this is episode 46. 
So there are 45 previous discussions like this. Uh, you can find them here on the videos section of the Facebook page. And then I also have a YouTube channel, uh, which you can get to from the Foraging Texas main page. Uh, and a lot of them are all there. I'm, I've, I've recently posted episode 40 of Meriwether's World on the YouTube channel. Uh, one of the things I do is take out some of the boring parts and me drinking and things like that and add some more pictures and so forth too. Uh, so the YouTube has more vision. It's not just me talking and waving my hands around. Um, the early episodes of Meriwether's World, I actually was able to do a kind of a split screen PowerPoint presentation with a little bitty me talking down here in the corner. Um, but because Apple in its wisdom decided to completely revamp the operating system of their computers, I no longer have the ability to do that. So, <sighs> okay, uh, where was I going with this? Uh, oh, choke berries. Okay, yeah, still the choke cherries aren't very common. Uh, Sam Thayer in one of his three books, I think it's his first book, he talks a great deal about choke berries as opposed to choke cherries, which are different, but choke berries. Uh, a lot of nutrition, vitamin C, minerals, things like that. As far as medicinal properties, that's not something I've looked into. Uh, let's see, Terrence just bought a small place in West Texas and they're everywhere. Uh, by everywhere, are you talking uh, choke berries? If so, send me pictures. Lots of pictures, leaves, flowers, bark, tree, you know, any of that. Please, I will, I will thank you. I will, I, I will. Terrence, if you have pictures of those, I will send you uh, a, a, a bandana for it. Because I would love to get pictures of choke cherry, uh, choke berry. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. anything else here? Okay, uh, Melody, do you do anything with the wart plants? Yes, I grow St. John's wart. Uh, spider wart, completely different family than St. John's wart or St. Andrew's cross. Uh, spider wart, it has a, a, a mucilage, uh, you know, a slime in it, which I use as a skin soother. The slime in the spider wart, the mucilaginous material, works the same as aloe vera, really, for you know minor burns, first degree burns, sunburns, dry chapped skin, things like that. Um, the St. John's wart, really proven uh, to help with anxiety and depression and mental issues like that. Uh, St. Andrew's cross, which is an invasive weed around here. Um, very minor relative to St. Andrew's, uh, uh, St. John's wart. So St. Andrew's cross and St. John's wart are in the same family, but the St. John's wart is like an order of magnitude better at the mental stuff. Oh yeah, you have tons over at your, so Uncommon Bees, just in case you know, he and I have been friends for a long time. I've been out to their property a lot. Uh, help them identify plants and I can vouch for everything they do. Uh, okay. Uh, wow. <laughs> 857, uh, covered basically one and a half plants. So just to recap, take your elderberry, just, you know, on a daily basis, elderberry is really good. So, oh, I, I was going to say, so let me, uh, bring up and the, this is one of these things that's always a work in process. Whoops. The elixir of immortality and i have on here an older formula there it is let me just bring this up but it has burdock it has reishi it has elderberry uh, not this one but previous ones and there's probably still some in there have self-heal or the heals all uh what else is in there those are the main things I'll just put it up there, but you can kind of see what's going on there. Um, you will notice in there, I mentioned watching Godzilla movies. So let's let's just, words of wisdom, because we have two minutes left, and I haven't done a words of wisdom. The importance of rituals in your life. If you watch a lot of uh, professional athletes, uh, baseball players in particular, 
Also professional bowlers, basketball players, golfers, they have little rituals they do before, say, like getting up to bat or once they're up at bat or before pitching the ball, uh, things like that. Science has shown that people that develop rituals, not to the extent of OCD where they can't function without doing the rituals, but have a something they do to tell their body, okay, I'm about to do something that's really important and let's everyone focus in on this. All parts of the body, ready, go. Um, so by having rituals, it primes the body for better performance. This even uh, tracks into before taking medicine. They've shown if you have a, a particular ritual you do before taking a medicine, um, you know, it's partially a placebo effect, but they've shown that you get better results. Um, my personal theory on this is this kind of led to the whole magic sort of thing and spells and all that. They are rituals that prime, you know, the body to create something that usually will be consumed to have an effect. And that ritual primes the body so that you get a stronger effect. Really, really cool stuff and kind of frightening. Um, they've even shown it has a secondhand effect that if you tell someone this was prepared with a particular ritual, um, even if that person is somewhat of a skeptic, it, it has a measurable effect on the performance. So there are certain things that I have that I have developed, just certain rituals to, to focus on the task at hand. And one of them is when I'm making my elixir of immortality, I need a Godzilla movie on. Silly. Very, very, very silly. Lucky the... Uh, <coughs> can't even remember. The, one of the broadcast channels here in, uh, in Houston, the, it's like a cheap, low-quality version of the Sci-Fi Network, has Godzilla movies on like five times a week. So there's always Godzilla around for me to watch when it's time to make my medicine. Okay, uh, Terrence, <laughs> no, I'm not selling anything that would be really illegal for me to sell any of this. Uh, I, you know, it was not made under FDA clean room processes and so forth. The best I can do is give you the instructions for making your own. Uh, how do you know she's a witch? Well, you know, burn her. If she, <laughs> you know, if she weighs the same as a duck. She must be a witch, which is always funny because they used a goose in that movie. Ah, yes, Lindsay. Yeah, rituals are amazingly powerful. Yep. So if she, I love the, everyone is on the same page here. Okay, wow. We're, we're running past the time. Um, thank you all. This just goes by so quick. I, at the end, I am just so hyped up and everything. So at this point, I am going to shut things down so my family can go make noise uh, again, because they're hiding out, being quiet. Uh, Miniweather is frantically working on schoolwork. It's been a, a very prolific year school-wise for her. Um, excuse me, but she currently has straight A's, so yay! That's why she's not, not here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hi, everybody. I really love you. I miss you lots and lots. Please don't. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Apparently, I was not supposed to do that. So she's here. You got to crouch down. Look, it's, it's her shoulder. Crouch down. <laughs> See, she's still alive now. <laughs> but like I said, she, she's maintaining her 4.0. So she has to get back to work. Okay. Good night, everyone. Love you all. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, go get some elderberry, and we will see you next week. I have no idea what next week's topic will be. Maybe I'll just, you know, talk about all the things that I didn't talk about tonight. But whew, until then, good night, everyone. <laughs>